The first season of the Golden Kamui anime series comes to a close, and the final two episodes play to the strength of the entire franchise. Disturbing imagery, toilet humor, and dick jokes. That's right, my friends, the Golden Kamui anime series is going to be taking a little break. Apparently, we're actually going to get multiple seasons from this franchise, which is actually something that I am very excited about, as I truly am enjoying the ridiculous story that is Golden Kamui. At the very end of the 12th episode, they announced that a second season is actually going to be coming very soon. This October, October 2018, is when we're going to see the second season of Golden Kamui, and I'm very excited. I'm going to wait to look at the manga version just a little bit longer, knowing that I can continue to experience this show in anime format. While it's not the most beautiful looking anime series around, I have to say that at least the voice actors bring a lot to this series, and these last two episodes were just insane. They almost seemed like they were going to be filler episodes at first. That was something that I was actually kind of afraid, that they were going to end this season with a couple of nonsensical filler episodes. Instead, we ended up not only getting to see another prisoner from Abashiri Prison, but we also got a ridiculous final episode, which is all about horse racing and fortune tellers. So, yeah, pretty ridiculous finale here. I'm actually going to be looking at two episodes here, if that wasn't clear enough. Episodes 11 and 12, and both of them are very different. The 11th episode is actually kind of a murder mystery in a hotel, which at first actually sounds kind of cliche, but it actually ends up being a lot of fun, as not only do we have Sugimoto and their group involved, but we also have Ushiyama, who's working with Hijikata, and Ushiyama is without a doubt my favorite character from the entire series. He's giant, he's bulging, he's hilarious, he's got a weird freaking thing on his forehead, and he has no qualms with telling women that he absolutely wants to have his way with them. But most importantly of all, Ushiyama goes by the code of the dick. For him, that's like the most important thing in the world is his raging libido, and the only thing that he can do to tame it is to lay down with a woman. And he ends up meeting the proprietress of this hotel who goes by the name of Inaga Kano. And apparently, she's actually a cross-dresser who used to be a prisoner from Abashiri Prison. And she's taking up a brand new lifestyle of murdering people because... Everyone needs a hobby, right? Basically, this creepy chick comes across as kind of like a weird version of Hannibal Lecter or Leatherface from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, luring victims into her place so that she can harvest their body parts, so to speak. That seems to be her entire M.O. as she's completely obsessed with finding the perfect body parts and then, frankly, just eating them. It's really creepy. The thing is, though, her disguise is so good that she actually ends up tricking Ushiyama and even Shiraishi, another one of her former inmates here. Uh, but it is eventually revealed that, of course, she is bad, especially when Shiraishi ends up getting caught, and it leads to this ridiculous Scooby-Doo-esque chase scene of watching these characters run around, get the real nature of this woman revealed to them as they constantly try to trap her, run into each other, get in fights, and eventually the entire hotel ends up getting burned to the fucking ground. Now, while the overall, like, mood of the episode is very tense and honestly kind of disturbing with the fact that this woman traps people in her basement and likes to cut up their body parts, the episode is absolutely hilarious for a lot of the imagery that it uses and just for the ridiculous quirks of the characters. I mean, Shiraishi is already a funny character just for the fact that his facial expressions are really great and he tends to be the butt of almost every single joke in the series, with no one taking him seriously or them quite literally just beating the crap out of him all of the time, but Ushiyama is really the show stealer of this episode. Again, demonstrating how incredibly monstrously powerful he is, not to mention having a good confrontation with Sugimoto for the very first time. He doesn't even realize that this is the immortal Sugimoto that he's actually talking to, and they go through this like little wrestling match with one another, which is really satisfying, because again, it just shows how strong Sugimoto is, even when compared to this massive giant of a man. But Ushiyama's biggest thing in the series is that he's indestructible, and that he has a raging libido. And when he sees this woman, the owner of this hotel, who's a former prisoner and he doesn't realize it, he just 
needs to bring that thing to bed. It's his slam piece, and he needs it now. The way that he actually addresses the situation is funny, because at first he's incredibly blunt. He's basically like, I want to fuck you, but then immediately says something that's kind of poetic about the person, as if he's trying to butter them up a little bit. He's trying to be chivalrous, but he's just coming across as something of a brute, and yet it makes him hilarious. But he is the type of character that, honestly, I can understand would be kind of controversial, especially in today's society. That and his entire philosophy about dick, which is funny. He basically goes through an entire lecture all about dick in front of Sugimoto, uh, Kira Ronke, and hilariously enough, a Serpa, who also recognizes that she's seen some dick. Really, there's no way to talk about this scene without it being awkward. What I will say is that it's really funny and one of the most side-splitting scenes that I've actually seen from the episode, but it all eventually just turns into this big giant chase through this mansion going after this crazy woman who's trying to kill all of them, and instead of her actually getting killed, they actually manage to save her because they gotta have those tattoos, and she's also gonna end up providing them with some important information about the next town that they're going to go to, which is gonna be the next arc of the series, which unfortunately we won't learn about until October. Or if you want to spoil yourself, just go ahead and read the manga. The second episode, the final episode of the season, is a horse of a different color. And yes, that was something of a pun because the entire episode revolves around horse racing. And it also brings up a really interesting proposal. What would happen if Sugimoto and their group just came upon a lot of money or treasure? Would they have to give up their journey? For Sugimoto, this is not exactly an option anymore because not only is he in this for the gold, and to help out his uh, his friend who died in the war, but he's also in it to help out a Serpa at this point. He's clearly grown a very strong relationship with her, and you can really start to see it blossom just a little bit more as the series is going on, especially in this episode right here. But really, this entire episode is all about Shiraishi, who is desperately trying to make money, and they meet this, like, fortune-telling woman who is a fox lady, according to a Serpa, who is also a member of the Ainu, but she has the ability to tell fortunes by ridiculous ridiculously balancing bones on her head and then making them fall to the ground. If they fall heads or tails, it kind of depends on what's going to happen and what you're trying to do. It's a little ridiculous, but apparently it's so foolproof that Shiraishi decides to take advantage of this to bet on some horses and make a lot of money. And somehow Kira Ronke gets involved because he's had a history with horses and decides to become a jockey and he ends up getting involved with the mafia and racing this horse. It's just so much ridiculous stuff going on here. Seeing this Ainu guy suddenly jump into a jockey outfit, Shiraisi desperately screaming at the top of his lungs wanting his horse to win. Basically, episode 12 is kind of a goofy episode, but again, it brings up the big question, what would happen if they actually did just come upon this money? Would they simply just give up and abandon a Serpa there? Really, this is something that I don't think Sugimoto would do at all. And it's something that a, uh, a Serpa actually comes to terms with in this episode when she is confronted by this fortune teller who tells her, what's wrong with winning this money? Oh, you're just afraid that you're going to be abandoned by your new friends. It's a really interesting prospect, to say the least. But mostly episode 12 is just sort of planting the seeds for some of the other storytelling that's going on later. Uh, we, of course, get a big confrontation between Hijikata and the uh, the 17th uh, Division soldier, whose name escapes me at the moment, but he's been the one who's been really distinctive and uh, seems like he's going to end up being the bodyguard of Hijikata at this point. Uh, the village that Hijikata and his group have come into is just getting completely ransacked by them. Everybody's getting killed. I mean, the first scene you see from episode 12 is a guy's hand getting cut off, so that kind of sets the tone for that episode, which is hilarious because the rest of the episode is all about horse racing. It's just insane, but I'm really glad that they actually ended with a story that does feel like it's something that was from the manga. I don't read the manga. This, this episode 12 did have some fillerish moments, but uh, tell me in the comment section below if this is actually a story that we saw in there. I'd like to believe the same thing for uh, Ianaga, uh, just the fact that she is a prisoner. Uh, I imagine that that's probably something that does actually exist in the manga version as well, and I hope they just weren't padding out and trying to create something before they move on to the next season. Because uh, I'm ready to see more of this story, and I can honestly say that the first season of Golden Kamui has actually got me kind of hooked on the story. Uh, the characters themselves are really great, and the more people that Sugimoto adds to his group, the more more fun than it actually gets. 
Um, again, this is a series that is an amazing balance between really disturbing imagery and some really funny jokes. I mean, the, the, the final scene of episode 12 is a great moment with uh, Lieutenant Surumi and their group as they're in the city where Sugimoto and his friends are actually going to arrive in the second season, and they're looking for this grave robber. And we get to see what happened to Nikaido. He has, like, all of these, like, weird body parts that he's keeping with him, and that's freaky as hell. Basically, almost every single group aside from Sugimoto's are complete psychopaths and freakers. Uh, and that's something that I didn't expect from a show that initially seemed very grounded, but the more the series goes on, the more wacky and outlandish it tends to get, and I imagine it's only going to get crazier from here. Uh, my only complaint with Golden Kamui is that, frankly, the production value is just not that great. Since the beginning of the show, it's been alright looking, but just nothing really to write home about in terms of the animation and the artwork. A lot of the times it can look downright bad, but this is a show that is completely saved by its story, its atmosphere, and that's basically it right there. It just sucks me in. It also seems like the type of show that I'd much rather watch like in the dead of winter. I feel like it's the type of show that would complement that weather. It's the type of anime that you want to sort of like bundled up with your loved one, your girlfriend or whatever, and just watch it and enjoy it. It's really dark storytelling, but it's also really funny at the same time. I've, I don't think I've really seen anything like this in a really long while, and uh, I really am digging it. I want to see more of Golden Calmly, so that's why I'm going to stay tuned for the next season of the show. Uh, when that one ends, if they don't announce a season three, maybe I'll check out the manga, but as, if they continue to pump out an anime version, this is going to be my outlet for checking it out, which might not be everyone's cup of tea, especially if you're a fan of the franchise, because... Historically, the manga versions are always better, but I've always been an anime guy. I, I love voice acting and color and movement and everything, and that's what I really love about this one right here. I hope the budget gets better in the next season, and I can't wait to see more of these crazy characters, Ushiyama in particular. The guy's insane. And this was an insane season and a great introduction to this franchise. I'm going to give both of these episodes four out of fives. I thought they were really entertaining. I have to admit, I liked Eleven just a little bit more. I just felt that the story was stronger and filled with way better imagery and just lots more funny moments. And another introduction of a crazy Abishiri prisoner. Episode 12, uh, it was still really good for what it was. Uh, and it's more just getting things prepared for the next season. And anything involving Shiraishi is always a lot of fun. He's probably one of my favorite characters from the entire series. Uh, but yeah, this was a great introduction to Golden Calm. We consider me at least a uh, casual fan of the franchise at this point, uh, and it's been really fun reviewing this show for you guys. I'd love to get your thoughts on these last couple episodes and what you thought of the first season of Golden Calm. We, if you're excited for the second season, if you're a manga reader already, are you going to stick with that? Are you going to keep watching the anime? Let's get a discussion going in the comment section below about the very first season of Golden Calm. We. So, I'll see you guys next time, and as always, stay down there, baby. <laughs>